Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. Um, so this was just my Saturday session with Otto. I um, I took him up the school and just, well, we just did a little bit of flat work and just ran through some various movements. Um, D came up with me, so you'll see that the camera angle will keep changing on the way around. Some of them might not be as good as others and um. Feel free to let me know what you think about where the camera is, actually, where's best to place it. Because obviously when I'm up there on my own, um, I was trying to find the best place to put it where, so I can record myself without having to ask for any help. So anyway, yeah, oh, the weather was so delightful. This was yesterday afternoon's session. Um, I actually thought I should have rode in the morning when it was a little bit cooler because it was quite warm. But luckily throughout our session that... It clouded over a little bit and then um, the sun went in, so it, it, it was cool enough, which was which was nice. Anyway, oh, it's <laughs> D there, my little poo picker. She'd been to uh, the first Isle of Man Pride festival um, earlier on in the day, hence the stripy rainbow socks. She came home with um, all sorts of rainbow merchandise had a great time so um that was great really enjoyed that it, you know it was even in a good enough mood to come up the yard with me which is rare very rare anyway so yeah so I literally just ran through a little bit of everything in this session so I thought I'd just talk you through it as I'm as I'm riding it um and initially here I spent quite a lot of time in the walk sorry it's a little bit boring maybe for you to watch but I just wanted you to see what I do do you know I didn't want to cut bits out and then you'd be like well she only walks in for a second I actually walked in for quite a while and I had done before um we started recording as well because Dee was faffing but um the reason that I walked in quite a long time yesterday was he just was a little bit locked in the neck when I first got on and um as I just even picked up a slight contact, I could feel he was like a little bit resistant against it. So, um, yeah, so that was the reason for that. I thought, what's the point? If I can't loosen him off in the walk, there's no point in going off into trot. And it was really hot. So, do you know, it was like, let's get this out of the way and get the contact sorted before we even move up the gears so that, um, you know, he's nice and soft and supple in the walk while we're both still cool and not wearing ourselves out too badly. And um, yeah, and just getting to let go in the neck. And to be honest, I just did that for as long as it took till he felt good in my hands. Um, and, th and there's no more um, logic to it than that, really. Do you know, I just thought I've got all day, you know, that I was, wasn't in a rush to go anywhere. I had nothing to cram in or panic about so I thought well, I'll just you know I'll just keep working away on this contact just keep flexing him off the hand that he wanted to lie on or pull against because lie on wasn't always the thing he just he just wanted to be a little bit against my hand so it's just a case of just like flexing him with that hand and then allowing the hand to go um back to where it was so that his neck could straighten and hopefully drop and round a little bit and yeah and just repeating that exercise nothing um nothing too technical and then what I did when he eventually let go in the walk was just pick him up into the trot and just think exactly the same but what I've <laughs> look at Dee <laughs> oh, she makes me giggle um what I find after I've made, I've got him to let go in the walk a little bit is when I go into trot obviously it's then a lot easier um because he's kind of already there when I go into the trot work. You know, he will build, he will bring a little bit of resistance back here and then. He's a little bit nosy in the outdoor as well. So I've always got to work on trying to keep his attention. Sorry, he keeps disappearing out of the camera, but hopefully it's not for long periods of time. Yes, here's me going up into the trot now. He started a little lazy. Do you know, it was hot out. I'm not too bothered about that. I know I can get him forward. Um when I want to get him forward now, there'd have been a time and a place that that would have been um, a pretty scary place to be in and being a little bit lazy and a little bit behind the leg. 
But um, I kind of allowed for it. You know, I keep asking and working him through it. But I kind of allowed for it at the start of this session because it was so hot. And we were just a bit like, oh, we, I think we were both a bit like, oh, come on, we don't... I don't want to argue today. I can't be bothered. <laughs> Let's just have a nice time. And um, and then I can pat the pony and put him away. See, what I'm looking for here is like, um, I still want a little bit of cadence in the trot, even at this, at the start. And that's because he doesn't naturally have a lot of cadence in his trot. He, you know, he, he, he moves quite flat. So I want to know that he's working over his back, you know, and engaging that core. And I can really feel that when he um, he really has that cadence, that little spring in his trot. And, um, you know, a nice swingy feeling behind the saddle, letting me know that he's really using his hind legs as well. So that's what I'm looking for when I warm him up here. I don't want him tight in the neck. And this is where he can be quite difficult because you'll see sometimes he will go behind the vertical Um I'm really not holding on to him in front. He just doesn't particularly want to work from behind. So when I start trying to pick him up and bring him together a little bit, he just gets shorter and shorter in the neck <laughs> and still doesn't work his hind legs like I'd like him to. But like I say, it was right at the very start of the session, so um, I wasn't putting too much pressure on him. Just trying to not have him so strung out that the hind legs weren't working because... Like, what's the point then? I hope that sounded okay, but you understand what I mean. Like, yes, I'm only just warming up, but I'm, there's no point in warming him up badly, you know, not using his whole body. Like, when you warm up before you go to the gym or whatever like that, there's no point in just warming up your arms and not warming up your legs. And then, do you know what I mean? I just want to make sure that his whole body is working even in the warm-up just with much less pressure on him. You know, that's the plan. Um, he felt great, though. I was really, really pleased with him. Considering he took a little while to let go in the walk, I felt like I definitely made the right move there to just spend longer in the walk just to get him to... Um, oh, he's having a little spook at D there, who is now lying on the grass bank sunbathing. Um, with the stripy socks up in the air. So <laughs> I'd speak at them as well. That makes sense to me. So yeah, you see as he's just going around here, he's got that nice swing in the trot and he's quite rhythmical and he feels quite even. Oh, and I just pop him into the can again. Again, fairly lazy transition, but I was feeling pretty laid back about it all as well so I wasn't particularly bothered then I will just like chase him forward in the canter a little bit more than I do in the walk and trot now really the reason for that is that he's super lazy in the canter and he will go four time and he will sit behind the vertical and use um like as little energy as possible <laughs> He gets really stuffy in the neck. So Cant is definitely his worst pace for just letting go and going forward. So again, I want to warm him up. But now I also want to start getting him responsive to what I'm asking him to do. Because if I let that canter be um, in the warm up section, I'll spend the rest of my session um, trying to get a half decent canter out of him. You know, once I start putting in the lateral work or the collected work or whatever else, the canter um, loses quality anyway. So I don't want to start my session with a bad quality canter. So I work quite hard to keep him quite forward and to keep him quite supple. You'll probably see me move my hands quite a lot more in the canter. He really sticks on the left rein. It's my fault because I'm strong on the left. Um... So it's something that I've trained into him that I'm now trying to train out of him. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was that was basically it. That was that was our warm up session. Uh, and then he's nice and swingy and loose and and nice and warmed up over his whole body and just ready to to start. You know the the, the harder work, ready to start picking him up and and putting him together a little bit more. Still just flexing him off there. So get ready for a change of direction in the camera. <laughs> so. 
Oh no, sorry. I just leave all these bits in that I get wrong. I didn't even think I hadn't cantered the other way. I always canter both ways, obviously. Um, he's very different one rein to the other. Not all your horses might be be like that, but he, he definitely is in the canter. Um, again, I think it's something I've trained into him because I'm quite one-sided. Um, I'm left-handed, so my left hand is much more... St- it's much stronger than my right and when I get into trouble I tend to hold on to the left and give the right one away so I have to work really hard on that myself do you know that's me trying to train myself not to do that as well because well all it creates is a crooked horse isn't it who then um, struggles with other movements because I've been disciplined enough with myself which is not what I want Oh, bless him. He did feel good. Okay, I do have to keep just encouraging that contact arm. And I'd still like him to go a little bit lower in the neck. To know, a little bit more open in it when I warm him up. But like I say, it's finding a balance with him between that and him not working his hind legs. So, do you know, I kind of have to play between the two. And find something that works. And not always the same thing works every day. Depends what kind of mood. I guess both of us are in. Bless him. Anyway, yeah, now we're going to start picking him up and doing a little bit more work. Uh, See, now he's nice and loose. He's using his hind leg. I'm pleased with that. Oh, good boy. Still just continuously flex him and make sure that when I just touch one rein or the other, I do get the reaction I'm looking for. Which is just for him to flex and let go and not to lock and, and draw back at me. Okay, guys, so here we go. Our first camera change. So now we're up at A. Can you tell I've got a new tripod for my camera? <laughs> and this one attaches to the fences and stuff, so it's pretty cool. So sorry, obviously it doesn't zoom in on me. I haven't got that technology yet. Um, so I know when he's down the bottom, it's really, really tiny. He kind of blends in with the trees at some point. But hopefully you'll get to see um, enough of him to figure out what I was doing and I can talk you through it as well. There's just there's D just heading back to get a little sunbathing spot on the grass. Um so yeah, so this so I started to pick him up now. Um you know, I'd probably been in the school about fifteen minutes or so at this point. Um it was quite a long, slow warm-up, but I just wanted to make sure I had him super supple. I didn't really have, like, a massive aim. I just wanted to work through a few things and just see, um, do you know, what he felt good doing, what he didn't feel so good doing, um, what made him tense and draw back at me or, like, throw himself onto the forehand. So um, initially when I picked him up, I just kept him in the walk and I just did a little bit of leg yielding to start with. So, sorry, it is really far away, so you, you can't see it so well. But when he comes up the top here, you'll see you'll see it better. Um, and, yeah, my aim with that was just to keep him... Oh, so, yeah, sorry, what you can see what happened there is I leg yielded to X, and then I walked him straight for a little while, and then I half-passed him um, over. So the difference there is with the leg yield... Um, let's just stick to this rein that I'm on so this is me on the right rein now so in the leg yield what I'm looking for is that he flexes his head um a little bit to the left and um, remember it's the only movement where they look away from the direction of travel so a little bit flexion to the left and then they move over to the right whereas the half pass position and they are you know, on this rein he's he's flexed over to the right Oh, this is me just picking him up and trying to just sharpen his front legs. Sorry, I'll go back to explain that in a minute. So um, 
just trying to get him to pick his front feet off the floor a little bit quicker and um you know think about a little half step this is quite good to wake him up it, it irritates him a little bit you can see he'll get quite tail swishy about it but also it just it does sharpen him up a little bit and get him thinking a little bit different and get him thinking about what I'm doing with my hands because he likes to just ignore stuff like little subtle half halts um again something I'm sure I've trained into him I've probably um been a bit too heavy on my hands but you see like just trying to get him to come off the front end and then when I felt like I had him in front where he comes his legs come off the floor as I as I give that little upwards movement with my rein then I just give him a little tap behind and just see if we can get a little bit of the start of the half steps I haven't got a clue about these by the way you know it's all trial and error and just trying to wing it a little bit so you know be kind to me <laughs> um but um I'd so I don't put a whole load of pressure on you know it might be that I should be doing more it might be that I should be doing less do you know I'm not 100% sure but it's it's fun to just play around and see how he reacts and I know that if I just give him a tap behind with the whip he's just gonna lift his bum and hump at me so this way it just really gets him thinking about the front legs and then the back legs just come a little bit more um or just naturally with the rhythm that's the way I feel it anyway with him um I have to just be careful because he does get a bit drawn back because he just gets a bit stressy and a bit tense but the reason I picked him up and did this with him a little bit was just to wake him up because he's um he felt like he dropped a little bit behind my leg and um just sharpen him up again <laughs> literally between the two of us we haven't got a clue but we have fun playing with it anyway so anyway back to the serious work <laughs> so yeah what was I saying so yeah so the leg yield I've explained that to you and then with the half pass so that then he's turning on this rein um he's his next then to the right yeah he's his head is facing over to the right and he's um yeah so he's looking in the direction of travel the shoulders the forehand always leads a little bit in the half pass. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see that in a, in a minute when I pick it up in the trot. So you know, I just felt like he kept quite nice and swingy in the trot. Um, after that nice, long, slow warm-up, it really helped. He just, he, you know, he felt happy. So I, what, what my aim was then was to, like, keep that nice, supple, soft feeling through his neck and his body as well as keeping um, that nice rhythm. Because what tends to happen is when I put him into the lateral movements, if I don't do it very carefully, he will um, just go back to kind of um, shortening his strides. He'll go quite choppy in the trot um, and the neck gets a bit tight or he overbends one way or the other. Um, and he can get himself in a little bit of a knot or he just runs sideways or he's not sideways enough. So, yeah, you get you get the picture. Um, all sorts of different problems can be created. So my aim was to just keep um, everything as quiet and subtle as possible. There you go. So we're just into the half pass now. You see his shoulders are just leading. So the thing with the half pass, the way that I ride it now is... Um, you have to point their head and shoulders kind of where you want it, want to end up. It's a little bit harder on the centre line, but if you're doing it back towards the track, find a marker that you want to end up at, you know, say like K or H or, you know, wherever you're going, um, and turn their head and shoulders for that marker, ride them across that diagonal line, and then just ask for the quarters to come over in, in like a traverse positioning um a lot of people try and ride it like a little bit more uh, I want to say like leg yieldy in the body um but they like try and oh, it's really hard to explain they try and like just get inside loads of inside bend and bring the quarters 
but can I keep the horse aiming straight down the school and move it sideways so it's got this like real banana <laughs> shape to the horse's body and it's moving sideways and they just yeah it's just it's just not the way and they get blocked and they get stuck so really like think about um with the half pass coming off your marker and turning across the diagonal line that you want to take so it's not necessarily you know the diagonal line um like from f to h or whatever but you know like for me here it'll be something like um Oh, I, I, honestly, I don't know my letters, so I apologise if I get this wrong. I should know them. I think it's like M, and then I'm aiming to sort of be, um, not get into the centre line till kind of D. Um, so just, anyway, yeah, I ride it on that kind of line. So I need to have D, picture where D is, or that point that I want to get to. And, um, place his head and his shoulders in that direction and then just ask the quarters over. So he's always um, still travelling across that diagonal. Do you know, there's never any doubt in his mind that that is the direction that we're travelling in. Whereas I think if you try and keep them straight in the body and push them over, one, they get stuck. Like, I can't even think. They'd have to jump sideways, really, wouldn't they? Anyway, um... But two, it can real vary vary the angle and they're not really sure where they're going. Whereas I try and my main focus is I've got him pointed where I want him to go. And then I can ask for a little bit more quarters, a little bit less quarters, a little bit more neck bend, you know, and play around with them type of things. Like you'll find in the canter now what I do because the half pass in the canter really does um, back him off. I think he's worse the other rain, so you might see it better on that rain. Um is he starts almost going four time. He really starts to lose the canter behind. So I... um pop a little change in there. Good boy. I am... Um, you'll see on this rain, I'll actually just ask for a much shallower half pass after this one because I'm like, oh, it's not going anywhere. Much shallower half pass and just really keep him going forward. So that, um, you know, I don't want to lose that canter rhythm. It's not worth riding the half pass if it jeopardises the rhythm of my canter. Do you know, I I think if you get the rhythm right, do you know, and that nice feeling, the supple and softness and the and um in the contact and everything, and all that's good, um, the half pass will come better. But if you just keep riding a half pass that's destroying them things and making the canter rubbish I think you're just creating a rod for your own back really so yeah anyway as you can see I like doing the leg guild first by the way just to test how much sideways I've got it's easier for him to go sideways in the leg yield than it is in the half pass um it's easier for me to like really increase the leg yield angle and decrease it whereas you can get a bit set in the half pass so trying to adjust it isn't always so easy so yeah that that's the reason I always do a little bit and I would stick in the leg yield for a long time if I felt like I needed to but once he feels good in in that sideways motion in the leg yield then I'll move on to the half pass but you can always go back to the leg yield if you lose it again um you know don't feel like oh no I've started the half pass now I can't go backwards it's not going backwards it's just um you know, just just going over, getting them back to okay. We go. You can go sideways, uh, and then when he felt good both ways, I just popped the little change in at the end there. Um, you know, because that's um just the next step in the level that we're doing. Super boy, and then I just make sure I've got that nice trot back. You can see he's come up a little bit in the neck, but not. I'm not too worried. He still looks relaxed. And here we have a new camera angle. <laughs> I quite like this one, I think. It's quite fun. So we just we just um attached the camera up on the fence quite up high so you can see most of the school. Sorry, I know it cuts off a couple of corners, but so yeah, after my leg yield I um I think I picked him up next and just did a little bit of warp pirouettes. 
let's have a look. I'll have to watch and see. It's good for me to watch this back as well. Obviously better when it's zoomed in, but still nice to see. Yeah, so it looks like it. So when I want him to go into warp pirouette this way, he has a tendency to swing his quarters. Again, I'm not saying this isn't something I trained into him wrong in the first place. Good boy. Um, so if he does that, I just ride him away and um, and just ask him again. I want the shoulders to lead him round in that walk pirouette so he doesn't end up in that banana shape, actually, that I was just talking about in the half pass, and just stuck. Um, you know, I want him to feel, like, free to keep walking. In that, because obviously, if you if you get them feeling restricted in the walk pirouette, they are going to stop behind and just pivot round, oh, and then so again, <laughs> just playing around with a little bit of the half steps with the walk pirouette. I find it's quite handy to use these. Um, do you know get quickening his his front legs with my hands a little bit like I was saying to you before with the half step, doing a little bit of that because I feel like then if he does get a bit stuck in the walk pirouette, I can use that. Um, to kind of help me out of trouble sometimes. So I do often just combine these two things where I play around and just get him... Look, him, he's so cute. He's like, I haven't got a clue, Mum, but we'll just give it a go anyway. <laughs> he was on good form yesterday. I was pleased with him. So I'll probably go off and just do a pirouette this way. I think I only did one each ring because he just he felt good. So the point is, yeah, so you want him to keep walking and keep stepping behind. He needs to keep moving them back legs um, on a nice small circle compared to the front legs. Good boy. And, you know, just keep that nice rhythm. You know, you don't want it to zoom round. You don't want it to be so slow that he stops, obviously. Um, Sierra's pleased enough with that. No point in um, keeping going until they go wrong. <laughs> In my opinion, anyway. Um, I've done it many times before, so I know that that's not a good idea. Okay, and then just pick up the trot here. And you see now I, I just start shortening the trot and asking for a little bit more cadence, you know, a little bit more upwards rather than forwards. Just test that I've got that. He definitely doesn't... Um, He's getting much stronger in that, but it's not something he can keep all the time. He's actually starting to show a little bit of willingness to do it in the um in the half passes and stuff as well now. Um when he's you know, when I warm him up correctly and he's super supple. Supple, he does offer me um a little bit more of that cadence in, in the lateral movements, which is nice. Sorry, I probably should have thought about this and edited edited it out a little bit because he's, like, missing for a little while there. Be better when I can to. <laughs> okay, so I think then what I started working on with him, yeah, is doing a little bit of medium trot work. Now, this, um, again, it's all, like, he was my, he's my, like, the first horse I've ever taught all this stuff to. Do you know, I've taught horses to leg yield, um... I've taught horses to half pass a little bit, things like that. But um, things like um, the medium trot, especially in a horse that hasn't got the natural ability. Um, he's the first one I've ever taught. So I spent quite a lot of time just chasing him too much and he'd run along on the forehand, um, you know, and doing the good old medium trot must be faster than work and trot type of attitude so he does tend to um run onto the forehand and just plow into the ground if I'm not careful so yesterday's exercise was about trying to just you know like make sure I can get him back afterwards get that nice cadence back in the trot and then just allow him to go forward from that trot but then what you find with Otto because of the way he's been trained I guess is he's just like oh, I'm not going forward unless you really make me. So then I have to yar him a little bit and then he drops his back a little bit. But if I do it, you know, like a, even if I have to do that a couple of times, then he gets the message and he starts going off them, the quieter, more subtler aids. And, um, and the medium trot really feels like it's starting to come now. 
and he doesn't get really rigid and drop his back and and go really against me in it anymore. Um, he does at times. We came zooming into the frame then, didn't we? But he, um, yeah, it's definitely getting there. I'm not worried about it. Something I wish that I'd learnt to ride better earlier and then I wouldn't be having so much dramas now. Oh, good boy. You see that? I know it's quite far away, but he looked to me like he actually lifted up in his frame when he went. Normally he drops his frame and goes quite long and flat and then it, it can get where his back legs are actually trailing out behind him, whereas they should be right underneath him. Yeah, the weight should they should be really stepping under behind so he can real he's so cute. So he can really um lift his, his forehand and bring it lighter to do that medium trot work. So again I just I played around with that until I got the result that I was looking for. Yes, he's not Velegro. I totally understand that. But compared to where we've been with it before, I felt like his reactions were good yesterday and he was really trying to stay up, um, you know, and keep his hind legs engaged as he went into that trot. And that's good enough for me, to be fair. We um, Rome wasn't built in a day and um, we will keep chipping away at that until he... Um, he feels stronger and more confident to be able to um, be a little bit more expressive again, I hope. He, is, he has been my little kind of mistake horse, I guess. Do you know, for his age, um, he probably should be more consistent in some of these moves, but I didn't have a clue. He didn't have a clue. We've muddled through it together. Absolutely loved every step of the journey. But this is the reason that he's like 15 now and we're only just starting to learn these things. Well, this is me knackered after doing a bit of medium trot, so I had to have a little break before I started doing the canter work. Um, but yeah, you know, this is not like me saying, oh, don't start this with your horse till, you're 50, till they're 15. He totally could have started it. When he was younger, he was strong enough and able, but we just didn't have a clue between us some of the time. We're just learning as we go along and, and kind of learning from the mistakes that, that we've made. That's what I mean. I don't mean, it's, I feel like it's a mistake that I had him. He's the horse that's allowed me to make these mistakes, you know, and we've just learned alongside each other. And honestly, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. In fact, I've really enjoyed it. And I, you know, and I think he's enjoyed the journey as well. And it's definitely been a positive thing for our relationship because we know each other really, really well. Okay, and then I started playing around a little bit with the changes. So again, really with him, what I do is I feel, I see how easy the first change is. He's good to change. I know that, but how much it affects the canter and everything. And if he feels good, then I can just start playing around with a little bit of, um, the tempi straight away now. Cause he's super, super good to change. So I think what I did is I just did a line of threes. They felt good. So then I'm like, okay, this time I'm going to ask for the twos you know, and see if they feel good. And if and if they're not good, then I'll go and I'll do them again and until they are. Well, within reason. You know, I'm not <laughs> I'm not gonna sit there all day, but um, you know, until I've got a positive reaction and then what I was doing then, because he gets quite sticky. So I was real pushing him on down this next long side and letting him really canter forward, you know, thinking of a of a nice medium canter and then just settling him at the top end for the changes again. Um, I want him to do the changes in a slightly more collected canter now. He, he's not a fan of it. Um, and he shuts down, he starts jumping together behind if I'm not too careful. And the canter just runs out of momentum by the end of a line of tempies. So I always think it's good to then just send him forward on the next long side and, and kind of unstick him where he's got stuck. Little monkey. But he was super good. And then what I started doing was just throwing in a couple of one, literally an in-out one. Um, they're the only changes that I've done with him along the line that they actually cause him to have a little flap and a panic. So I, you know... I didn't push them yesterday. He'd been super good. We'll have sessions on them where, you know, 
we, we'll work a little bit harder on them. But that wasn't the point of yesterday's session. And he'd already done quite a lot, so I wasn't going to start giving him a hard time about them. It's the same thing, right? What you'll find on this rain, if you can see, um, I know it's difficult, sorry, but if you can see it, is um, he's not so good. Um, when I ask him to change down the long side again, something that I never knew in the first place that I've kind of, in retrospect, I've, I've gone back and... Um, started teaching him a different way was to learn the changes I was doing them down both sides because he wasn't getting it quite right you know I wanted to keep just chipping away rather than tire him out by putting a medium canter in every time and then trying to um just fix it down one long side but anyway yeah teach them to change down the outside of the school it helps them with their straightness and what it's shown me is that Otto isn't very straight this way <laughs> because he doesn't want to change because he can't swing his bum. So again, it's not a problem and it's not, a, you know, it's no reason to um, take him away from the wall or, or do it any different. I've just got to figure out how to ride him, like sometimes putting him in a bit of a ronva positioning or, um, you know, just having his positioning slightly different little shoulder four or you know whatever I feel I need to do to to get him feeling a little bit straighter and a little bit more underneath like keeping his hind legs underneath him but sometimes then I get him like that he feels great I ask for the change and he just goes no that's hard um so again it's just it's a little bit about chipping away isn't it and then you just skip through them little twos there so then we just again um little in outs I don't know if you'll be able to see them but I just literally go for a change and a change back straight away and then pat the pony so he feels good then ask for it again so it'll change in change out because I want him to feel super confident and brave about them at the minute because they do panic him you know um they're very very different to ride I haven't got much of a clue what I'm doing with them um and they obviously give him a very different feeling as well. Um, and he just gets a bit like, well, I haven't got a clue. And he gets really tense. And, and I thought, oh, what's the point? He'd been a super good boy. I was really pleased with him. He had a good head on him yesterday. <laughs> and that was it. Then I just give him a little stretch off so the camera will change angles again in a moment and um, I'll just talk you through my cooling him down process oh here we go little camera angle change here he is so um, I warm I cool him down a little bit like the warm up I'm thinking longer in the neck but I don't mind if he's lower again in the neck in fact I quite like it when I'm cooling him down to have him lower um in the neck because just like him to real stretch out their muscles that he's just used um but the same thing he has to keep cantering do you know he's lazy and, and he's worked quite hard now do you know we're sort of like 40 45 minutes in and he's a bit like oh gosh do I have to use my back end but I still want him to stretch over his back. So although I'm cooling him down and giving him a nicer time, I'm not totally letting him off the hook. Um, in the trot, he's a little bit easier. But yeah, just try, I try and always think about in my head him stretching all the way over his back, from his ears to his tail, all the way through. That is the aim I'm looking for. So yeah, it doesn't matter to me if he you know, as low as I can get him with his head for these stretch off bits. So he just goes back to the stable feeling nice and supple and loose and lets go of any tension that our session might have created. And I literally just do canter, through trot, through walk. Sometimes I do um, both reins in the canter, sometimes I canter, but I don't tend to stretch him off all on one rein. So you see this time I cantered in one way, um, trot him the other and then I'll probably change the rain to walk him off as well. Um, my focus in the walk with him, because I tend to just throw the reins at him and be like, oh, I'm finished. And then he doesn't really stretch off. So I'm I'm trying to be disciplined and think a real free walk on a long rain type of movement. 
because I've got extended walk in my test and I tend to, you know, like try and feed the rain out a little bit and he just pokes his nose and doesn't stretch down. So I've been working a little bit harder on that, just trying to get him to stretch his nose out. See, he doesn't naturally want to just put his nose out in the walk. Sorry, my dogs might bark in a moment because there's someone going past the house. So I apologise if they do. But anyway, yeah, that's our session. So I hope that he goes back to the stable feeling nice and loose and, and fresh and happy.